good afternoon. Um, we're going to have a little chat about some things that might help you get through this time. Um, this is a series of talks I've been doing about self-mastery, but this one today is about what I'm calling GNR, which sounds like Guns N' Roses, but it's not actually. Um, for those of you who remember that band from way back when. So when it's making particularly about guilt and resentment, because when you're being isolated in this current time of life, or the current time of the, the challenge we're facing, I'll put it that way, we're facing some opportunities, and one of those is that we have this um, containment energy. Now, if you're with somebody else, this is where this may come up. It may come up if you're on your own as well, so I want to give you some feedback, because the GNR, we're talking about, which is guilt and resentment, just so you know what I'm talking about, you'll be really clear up front, can affect you if you're on your own or with other people. And with it being in isolation, in quotes, whether it's now or in the future, because some states aren't jumping into this yet, it can affect you in very interesting ways. One thing that happens, which you with somebody else who you are sharing a house with, can be friction, as I mentioned in the title, which can be a form, can be a um, springboard <laughs> into a bunch of things, including guilt and resentment, let me say it clearly. Because when you're in this confined space, it's not as easy to walk away. Although, okay, I'm, I'm saying things and I'm going, I should go over here now, I should go over here now. I'll get to the point in a moment, so stick with me. So my, my feet, my, what I want to talk about, because I was talking to a friend of mine about this yesterday, was about, you live for yourself, you're, you're, so the three of you marry, okay, good to know. Um, <laughs> there's actually um, a conversation I had with a friend of mine yesterday, she was like walking inside to a face, uh, Facebook Messenger, call me, v video call me, so we had a chat, we hadn't spoken for, before in person, it was quite nice. But what she talked about was this understanding about dealing with this thing, and I started to explain to her what I understand about guilt and resentment. So I'll give you the, the explanation of how to work through it or why it shows up. Actually, I'll say why it shows up first, then show you how to work through it. So if you've got any guilt, resentment, guilt and or resentment in your life, because they're actually two sides of the same coin, which I'll explain, stay tuned. You'll have some, I'll give you some tools to work your way out of this. So here's how it works. One of the things we deal with in this world is a thing called judgment. Yes, that wonderful word judgment, the big J, which on its own has an innocence because you say, well, I have good judgment or bad judgment. I'm talking about the judging where you are forcing separation between yourself and other people, between yourself and yourself. The challenge with this, the, the opportunity with this, the um, reflex <laughs> with this, is that oftentimes we, we, we climb down the hill of judgment into guilt or resentment. And just to explain quickly, guilt is self-inflicted or self-reflective. Resentment is other reflective, not necessarily inflicted. And I'll explain that one again as well. Actually, let me start with resentment, make it easier. So there's there's an old saying about, thank you, Marnie. I'm glad you like that. Um, and hi, nice to see you. One of the things with resentment is we feel sometimes we're justified being resentful. We judge resentment as a good thing, which is a double whammy in right there. Because we somehow feel that if we're upset with somebody else because they did something to us, we should be resentful and make them feel bad. That's such a silly idea. Because the things when you resent somebody, the only person you hurt is yourself. To quote, I mean, there's a, there's a quote from way back when. Yes, judgment is isolating separately, indeed. Yes. Um, was that what I said? No, you said that. <laughs> I said that, I can't remember. So the, the thing we'll talk about is that resentment, the, the, to use the old um, metaphor analogy, I'm not sure you to call it, actually in metaphor is that resentment is like taking poison expecting the other person to die. I'll say that one again so you get the point. Resentment is like taking poison expecting the other person to die. What that literally means is that when you're judging somebody else, resentful of somebody else, and you're feeling like you're throwing daggers at them, what you're actually doing is injuring yourself energetically. The other person's oblivious. In fact, most of the time when you resent somebody, they have no clue you're resenting them. So it really isn't very, very effective. So first of all, just know when you're, you're in resentment, it's a self-injuring practice. Yes, self-injuring practice. The same thing is true over guilt. Now guilt, as I said, is self-inflicted because guilt is where we sometimes use as a panacea to excuse what we did as bad behavior. I'll have to unpack that one as well. The way I, did, I learned it from a long, long time ago, in seminars back in the 80s, <laughs> I've been doing this for a long time, is that basically, <clears throat> And guilt, actually, you start with um, yeah, start with guilt. Easy to work with guilt. So start with guilt. So you as a you, you are a good person. I'm presuming that as you're watching my videos, I trust you're a good person. 
and you may at some point do something bad in quotes somewhere you violated something somebody somebody's life you did something wrong you didn't do what you promised to do whatever it was that triggered the feelings of guilt that wrongness you did doesn't jive with you being a good person so I'm going to explain this it's more like a logic problem in a way it makes, it makes sense we can't actually internally easily hold the understanding that we're a good person and we do bad things they don't go together there's a there's a, a, a almost repulsion between them the only way they fit together is if you put a thing called guilt in between them yes guilt is a separator from being a good person with doing bad things not saying it's an excuse by the way let me qualify that but when you understand that guilt is a means to um, save your sanity it has a benefit but it's not going to long, last long so explain and how to get out of it too so by the way I'm going to talk about how to get rid of get rid of to eliminate remove guilt and resentment as I get further in but I'll explain how these work so again you're a good person you most of us believe we're good people now there are certain people who I don't who think they're really bad to the bone they don't really care about anything they can do what they're gonna do those sort of people never feel guilt because they are a bad person doing bad things there's no discord there but when you understand the the, the um, discord between your belief about yourself being a good person and I'm not talking about worthiness just about being a good person you're a good person because you believe you're a good person most of us do that but then we do something that will be listed in the column of being bad there's a discord there there's a there's a there's a, a schism that we don't ha have a way of um, compartmentalizing away effectively unless you put something between it to separate the two like we can't face the both sides at the same time it's not possible for our minds to comprehend apparently and what we use to make that amenable is by putting guilt in between so imagine you've got a good person on one side doing bad things on the other side and then this wall in between called guilt and that saves you from yourself the reason it saves you is because it allows you to still feel good about yourself and not go crazy because you did something bad now some people have a psychological well actually even a psychotic break even sometimes when they're doing doing something that's so outside their frame of reference it doesn't fit who they are so guilt is saving you from something that could be a lot worse so let me so, let me, so qualify that let me just talk now about resentment because it's the other it's the other side of the same coin so switching gears resentment so you may know somebody in your life that you believe they're a good person but they may have done something bad in your life Perhaps it's a, a, a sibling, a parent, a family member, a co-worker, and a, a lover, ex-partner, ex-spouse. Especially there, there's, there's definitely some juice for people there. So this, that person you, you know, you knew back at the beginning, or you believed at the beginning was a nice person, but they did some bad things that you label as bad. And again, that's a judgment thing, and I can get to that as well. So we evaluate, which is different, some things being good or bad. And which should say we judge them as good or bad is really the way we do it. So that person, maybe, maybe um, let's take an example. You have a spouse who, when you got married, you actually thought was the best person on the planet, wonderful, great, good person. So that's wired into your, your conscious memory or subconscious memory. But then in 10 years into the marriage, they cheat on you and violate your trust. And you don't know what to do with that. What you do tend to do is resent them for it. You tend to find a way of judging them as wrong because they did something bad maybe it's cheating maybe it's maybe they got maybe they, they got they fell into an addiction whoever whatever it is and maybe you couldn't handle that no no this is a an example so not saying it's everybody's case an example when that again schism happens between you believe they're a good person they do a bad thing the only way to keep those two in um balance so to speak is with resentment in between so again guilt is turned within resentment is turned out but the thing about resentment as i said is like you're projecting upset on the other person but they're not even feeling it all you're doing is upsetting yourself it's toxic to your own system again taking poison expecting the other person to die the same thing is true with guilt except that you feel it both ways yes yeah, guilt's a double whammy because guilt first of all is judgment against yourself and you're feeling guilty for the judgment you place against yourself it's a double hit not fun so when I talk about guilt and resentment I'm using and again I'm using the top of the conscious the, the context of where we are right now in life because a lot of us are being isolated because of the current virus experience so we're spending time either on our own where we might be feeling guilt about things or resentment about other people who are out doing things like the resentment that came out um, against the school break school students in Florida and also about the people on the beaches in Santa Monica in California that was some, there was some serious resentment thrown out then so there's a lot of opportunity I won't even talk about the politi political speeches <laughs> I'll leave that alone there's a lot of opportunity to feel resentment 
the thing is, what's really going on is we know deep down those people out there, yes, even those people out there are actually good people. But there are some things that we think are heinous, bad, wrong, mistaken, poor judgment, etc., etc., etc. So we then resent them. So you see how this, this seesaw works. On one side, you've got good. On the other side, you've got bad, which is good person, bad actions. Either you're a good person doing bad things or somebody else is a bad person doing good, good person doing bad things. And then the bad action on the other side and the teeter-totter or the seesaw in the middle is resentment for them, guilt for ourselves. That's kind of the mechanics of how it works. And I'm making this very simplistic, by the way. If you want to go deeper, by the way, message me. I can guide you through it if you're facing this challenge. So guilt, resentment, two options. But what they both have in common is judgment. Judgment is basically a way of basically hammering on your own hand because, your hand didn't, because you didn't get to grab something you want to grab. It's that sort of self-abusive, flagellation, upsetting, painful experience. Not recommended. But we will do it. It's a human, it's part of a human makeup. I, I mean, I've done this work for a long time and I've still got plenty of judgment to work through. <laughs> it comes up a lot, but I have practices now to alleviate that and make it easier. So I'm going to provide a little bit of that for you now. I'm going to use the F word, by the way. So stay tuned and, and open your ears. <laughs> the, the truth is that with judgment that we place against ourselves or other people, again, guilt to resentment, it's all part of the same package. There's, I mean, also, I'm also going to I'll throw blame in the bucket because that's another one we do is blame, put that in the bucket as well. All of those are tied to judgment. Judgment is a way of punishing ourselves, independent of anybody else. Because when we're thinking judgment, even we're yelling judgment, the other person may or may not receive it. So just be aware of the fact that when you're judging, all you're doing is, is abusing yourself. So, okay, I think my, my cash just, just went away for a second and came back. Hopefully it's still going. All right. So let me know if, this, if, you, if you missed anything, I'll go back and recap, because I think I just got cut off for a second on my phone. It just blipped on me. Judgment is a self-imposed form of suffering. It may feel good when you're doing it. And as Amani said, judgment is isolating and separating. It is, and it's also painful. Because what we do with judgment is we start to devalue ourselves. Judgment is a form of... Um, painting over self-worth in a way because when we start to judge ourselves we diminish who we are we diminish excuse me yeah well hopefully what i said didn't get cut off as well so thank you for letting me know um <laughs> stay on track and focus on back on track so so when we judge we're basically attempting to paint over our goodness with a devalued perception of ourselves that's one way of putting it so it kind of works so my my invitation to you is if you're looking at judgment, you want to listen up because I'm going to talk about the big, the big F word as I mentioned earlier, and it's not the four-letter word; it's a much bigger word than that, which is forgiveness. Just to be clear, <laughs> forgiveness I've talked about quite a few times in my talks. And if you have, by the way, if you haven't seen my talks before, I've done over a thousand Facebook lives in a different series. This is my new series called Self Mastery. It's a number eight. I don't know if I'm going to go a thousand. Not starting here. That was three years worth of talks. I started after the election. Um, I'll tell you about when you find the links for that at the end. By the way, so. When you learn to deal with forgiveness, when, so when you learn how to wield forgiveness as a weapon of health, of loving, of compassion, and weapon, the weapon's the right word, but when you learn to really use forgiveness the right way, then guilt and resentment become manageable. In fact, they get to be eliminated, as does judgment. Because what forgiveness is about, as I mentioned, because I said with judgment, it's always self-inflicted. You may be judging somebody else, but what you're doing is like you're pointing a finger at somebody else, but the other things are pointing at yourself. The judgment is back at yourself. You're judging somebody else, but it's really you're judging yourself for judging them at the same time. It's a double whammy, again, like, like guilt is. So the way to forgive, or excuse me, the way to go through this is by doing forgiveness. Now, forgiveness has many different forms. The way I, t the way I talk about it is, because there's actually, um, if you have, there's a book out there by Colin Tipping called Radical Forgiveness and Radical Self-Forgiveness. He's got two different books. They are pretty good. I personally think that forgiveness has to be a heartfelt experience. Now, the way I describe forgiveness is it's not something you just do by going, oh, I forgive myself, I'm done. Or I forgive them. Mm -mm, not effective. The way to forgive is you first realize you've got to forgive yourself for whatever you said, did, or believed, or judged. Period. Because again, resentment or guilt are internal for yourself. So when you forgive, you've got to forgive yourself. There's nothing else there to forgive, as strange as that sounds. It will make sense in a moment. But the thing about forgiveness is it has to be applied from a place of compassion. I've become clear that forgiveness is definitely not a mental exercise. Forgiveness is a physical embodiment, heart-based practice. 
So the only way you can have forgiveness actually stick to apply to land is when you open your heart and you have compassion for yourself. So the way I work with my clients on this, just give you a, a um, Cliff Notes version, is when my clients are dealing with some, some form of judgment, I'll help them get clear what the judgment is. I'll also help them get clear on the pain that's underneath the judgment because judgment is a pain generating experience. You may not be aware of it, but it is. Once you get clear on the pain, then you can bring compassion to that place because when you get into the emotions, it's easy to evoke your heartfelt compassion. You constantly walk in the shower in the showers of self-forgiveness. Yogi Bhajan. Interesting, okay, I haven't heard of that quote before. But this is the thing, forgiveness is a, re is a really useful skill to develop because first of all, it does help you and remind you to go back to your heart because guilt and resentment tend to live up here. So when you feel a sense of compassion because you are starting to realize the hurt you've applied to yourself, you can f be compassionate about because part of it is, it's like a two-piece puzzle. You bring compassion to the parts inside that hurt, you love yourself enough to forgive yourself. So when you say the, the, the forgiveness statements, and I can send you, I, I have a, a worksheet I can send you if you want that, let me know. I'll tell you, I'll tell you more about this at the back end when you find this stuff. When you start to forgive yourself, it's really about sealing the compassion you have yourself in those places that have been wounded. Because again, judgment is a self-inflicted wound. Forgiveness is hand in hand with, with compassion to be like a balm, a healing agent for the parts inside that hurt. So you work through forgiveness, and again, forgiveness is for yourself about the judgments you placed against yourself and or the judgments you placed against somebody else. The thing about forgiveness is it has nothing to do with anybody else. Forgiveness is a self-applied, self-supportive, self-expressed practice to help you love yourself more and to let yourself off the hook. So just so you get understand this, this piece of the teaching, it's a deep teaching I'm teaching, by the way. This is one of the biggest pieces of the work because so many people don't even know they're doing it. So understand that guilt, resentment, judgment, and I mentioned blame are four aspects of getting out of alignment with yourself. There's a lot more besides that, but this will keep you busy. So understanding that that's what we're talking about here gives you the freedom to understand that your ability to forgive yourself is up to you, nobody else. That's good news and bad news. The good news is you have control, dominion, choice over this. The bad news is you may forget. So the key about this is remembering to bring forgiveness, like what Mary's quote was about constantly walking in the showers of self-forgiveness. It's that idea that basically you're constantly aware of how you can be more loving to yourself. You're constantly aware of how to be more compassionate with yourself and you're constantly aware that when you catch yourself judging, you forgive yourself. Now, again, that's the Cliff Notes version. It's a bit deeper than that. But I was giving you the idea and the understanding and the possibility of having more freedom and more joy and more love in your life. As I've talked about for many talks, not just these eight, but the last thousand before that, self-forgiveness, self-love, self-caring, self-support are keys to having more freedom and abundance in your life. But it starts within. So a couple things I want to mention to you. So again, I mentioned uh, Connor Tipping's um, book, The um, <laughs> Radical Forgiveness and Radical Self-Forgiveness. I've got the title for a second. Um, those books are on Amazon. Some you can find them. Um, on his website is the Radical Forgiveness Worksheet. I have a copy of it I can send to you. It's a download you use for free, so not, it's not a, a paid thing. If you want to get the forgiveness, work, the forgiveness Workbook I have, me, let me know over social media. I'll send you the link. You can download it for free. It's up to you. It's a PDF. You can, it's my gift to you. If you want to work through this with me, let me know that too, and we'll set up an arrangement for a call, and we can set up and do the work with it. So this is, I would say, not for the faint of heart. True self, you're welcome, Mary. I'm glad you got some value out of it. Yes, radical forgiveness, forgiveness is the name of the book. Yes. Um, if you are really ready to go deeper in loving yourself, to go deeper in accepting yourself, and to go, be, go deeper, going deeper to being compassionate for yourself, then this is the perfect time. Especially if you're isolating at home when you've got some, maybe some time on your schedule. So I thank you for watching. And if you want to get some, excuse me, if you want some support, please message me. Again, the worksheets I have. If you want to have a, uh, set up a schedule or talk with me, you can set up a time, schedule it, and we can set up the PayPal stuff and make it work. But the main thing I want to tell you is that you have the ability, the freedom to forgive yourself so you can be absolutely aware of your own worthiness, your own worth, your own love, and your own appreciation. So take this to heart. You have this possibility. Even if you've got a massive amount of judgment you've been carrying for most of your life, it can all be eliminated reduced, removed with compassion and love for yourself and with forgiveness.
So none of it's none of it's insurmountable. You can have what you can have the freedom that I'm talking about here with the steps I'm recommending. Got you interested? <laughs> so I hope that gives you something to think about. Some grist some some um what's the word looking for? Some grist for the mill? Something like that. Some opportunities. So take this to heart. You can have the freedom you want and the work and the compassion and the love for yourself just by willing to say yes to that. Again, if you want some help, reach out to me. Um, and by the way, I did mention that I've done these talks for a long time before this series I'm doing now. If you want to know about the previous thousand broadcasts, yes, thousand broadcasts called Messages from the Masculine, I did those over the last three years. Send me a message, I'll give you the link. It's on YouTube, it's easy to find it on page because the Facebook link is really hard to find, but on it's easier on YouTube. So the questions, message me about that. If you want to get some help, message me about that as well. And uh, my reminder to you is be gentle with yourself. This is a time you can be more tender with yourself, be more self-supportive, self-caring, because just to be clear, in this time of the virus that's going around, I don't want to use the full name because I don't want to be you know, knocked out by the, um, um, the bots that go around checking on these things, is that your internal mental and emotional states is just as important as your physical state. If you're taking care of yourself on the physical level with washing hands and everything else, it's important you do the inner work, which is washing your <laughs> mind and your heart to really come back to a place of wholeness because it truly is your physical state is impacted by your mental and emotional state. So take care of yourself on all levels. I have, help, I have skills and guidance to help you with that. If that's a question you want to get some help with, reach out to me as well. So with that, I thank you for watching. I appreciate you being with me. Um, I hope this has made some sense. If you have any questions about this, please put them in the comments. You can reach out to me for support or for those links, let me know. Um, send me a message over social media. And uh, as a reminder, as always, please take care of yourself. I'll see you again soon.